I'm your host of the most local 23, you're joining me for Perfect Match Chapter 5, Home Again. Sparks and smoke fill your vision. Wh what? You remember the impact of the crash, the crushing steel and the shattering glass. Your head swims and aches and you realize you're trapped in the car. You raise your hands against the warped, crumbled door beside you, testing the handle. I should push. <sighs> heave with all your might, but it doesn't budge. Your vision fades as exhaustion takes you. Suddenly metal creaks and groans, and you catch a glimpse of Hayden as the door inches open. Billy! Billy, stay with me! Hayden... Slowly, darkness fades in around you, and you hear the distant sound of sirens. You make out the distant beeping of medical equipment and the murmur of busy voices. Your eyes open as the hospital room comes into focus. Billy, you're awake! Uh, Nadia, what happened? We were in an accident last night. Is everyone okay? Everyone's fine. I, I don't remember too much, but the paramedics say they found you outside the car. But I remember you being pretty banged up. How did you escape the wreckage? How did I get out? I think Hayden pulled me out. Aiden, are you sure? I remember seeing her for a split second. Well, then you're dating a hero. If she pried that door open, it must have been some adrenaline rush. Aiden arrives, holding a bag from the gift shop. Her eyes light up when she sees you. Billy. You two should catch up. I'm gonna go speak with Steve. He's speaking with his doctor just down the hallway. Nadia leaves as Hayden takes her place at your side. I was so worried about you. Hayden presents you with a gift in her hands, a bouquet of flowers. I got these to cheer you up. May maybe make you feel better? Uh, they're beautiful. But what about you? Are you alright? I got a little banged up, too. The doctors cleared me, but my memory is spotty. Aiden, so glad we got out of this. Okay, you're my hero. Is there something you're not telling me? I'm glad we got out of this. Okay. Me, too. I don't know what I'd do if you were seriously hurt. Everything happened so fast. Aiden slides her hand over yours and grips it tightly. Hey, we're safe. We're together. Everything's gonna be fine. After your doctor returns for a brief final inspection, you're released with a clean bill of health. Hopefully this much goes as well in sophomore, or junior. You exit the lobby of the hospital where you find Steve and Nadia conversing with an older man. Billy, Hayden, I'd like you to meet my father. Uh, Robert, nice to meet you. I came as soon as I heard. Matt offers his hand, and Hayden shakes it, giving a curt, reserved nod. Hey. Why was there a hesitation, hey? Am I trying really too hard to see in this? i uh, glad you're here. It's great to see a friendly face after that ordeal. Uh, you gave an old man quite a scare. I promise there's nothing to worry about. We we're just as scared as you were. We'll try to minimize auto collisions in the future, okay? Yeah. Uh, we were just as scared as you were. Well, at least we have each other to lean on, right? I assure you, we were obeying all speed laws, Mr. Tennyson. <laughs> Relax, Nani, I'm sure you were. Anyways, I've spoken to the doctors. See, he's been given it all clear, but he took a pretty nasty hit. He also had a bad cut on his palm from broken glass. Nadia dotes over a bandage wrapped around Steve's hand. It's fine, Nadia. Nothing but a scratch. Even so, I'd like to take Steve back to my place to rest up and give him some time-tested home remedies. I'm pretty sure it's whiskey or apple cider vinegar or both, but that's my pops for you. Always the DIY. Is there anything we can do to help? Oh, no. Nadia has volunteered to lend me a hand. Two of you should relax, enjoy Cedar Rest, and we can meet this afternoon as planned. You should try Gina's Pancake House. It's quaint and romantic place, quite the date spot, if I remember correctly. 
Dad, please don't be embarrassing. Robert laughs as he puts an arm around Steve and walks toward the exit with Nadia in tow. We'll see you two later, Billy. Hayden takes her hand. What do you say? After all that's happened, it would be nice to unwind just a bit. Just the two of us? Ah. Oh, your long hair is just... Requesting my fingertips be run through it. I mean, what? Um... Pass. You're right. We should probably take it easy. Maybe just a stroll back through town, to our bed, and breakfast them? Sounds good to me. Where well, we can cuddle in bed and I can smell your soft hair. What? I'm sorry. My brain is still half asleep right now, so shut up. <laughs> After being released from the hospital, you and Hayden walk arm in arm through Cedar Rest. Do you think Nadia will be alright with Steve and Robert? Of course. She's stronger than she lets on. I admire her a lot. Hayden stops and turns to you. And if this meet the parent thing goes horribly wrong, well, the two of us will be there for her. Together. Us, huh? You know, I don't get tired of hearing you say that. Well, then I'll be sure to say it more. She leans in close, smiling. I should kiss her. Draw her near and kiss her slowly, sweetly, and deeply. I could do this all day. Tempting, but we do have plans today. We should get back to our rooms and freshen up before it's time to meet the, with the others. We can freshen up after a kissing session. Shut up! Later that day, you arrive at a quaint property with a barn that greets you on the way to the rustic farmhouse. Wow, this is where Robert lives? Way different from anything in the city. Yeah, but somehow I think it fits Robert. Also, I don't know, I just kind of get a feeling about him. Feeling something old-fashioned, nostalgic, familiar somehow. How very cryptic of you. You continue up a cobblestone path to the front door of the main house. When you knock on the door, Robert greets you with a smile and another hearty handshake. Great to see you two. Come on in. Come in. Robert leads you in the living room where Nadia and Steve and are enjoying beverages on the couch. Hey, guys. Yes, hi, hello. Can I offer you two some drinks, coffee, milk, something stronger? Oh, you know what? Hold on. Coffee. Oh, God, yes. Mm. <laughs> Caffeine does a brain good. Ah, oh, someone after my own heart. I'm bringing some for myself. I'll pour you a cup. And for you, Hayden? Something stronger. Sounds right up my alley. Ha, huh, with pleasure. Coming right up. I'll be right back with those drinks. Robert leaves to the kitchen for a moment and soon returns with a tray full of beverages. Thank you so much, Mr. Ten Mr. Tennyson. We love drinks. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Nadia. You all settle in, Nadia stands and beckons you over. Billy, a word? You step aside with Nadia, leaving the others to talk amongst themselves. What's wrong, Nadia? I'm freaking out! Is what's wrong. I'm so nervous it's stupid. I've been trying to hold it together all day, but I can't tell if Mr. Tennyson likes me. I've been compensating by smiling more and talking louder. Ah, uh, why am I like this? Ah, uh, Nadia, don't worry. Everyone loves you. Snap out of it. Breathe. Have a sip of your drink. I'm sure it'll calm you down. My drink, but I haven't told you what it is. Whether it's cocoa or alcohol, I'm guessing you chose something to help take the edge off. You might as well drink up. You know me so well. Nadia takes a long sip from her cup and sighs contentedly. Better? Better. Return to the group with Nadia, where Robert immediately calls her over. Nadia, Steve was telling me that your college degree is in art, correct? Catch Nadia taken aback for a moment before a confident look of resolve washes over her. A master of fine arts, actually. I'm very proud of it. You see, see? Ambition, vision, such an admiral qualities. 
You could have taken a page out of Nadia's book growing up, huh? Robert slaps Steve jovingly on the back, and Nadia shoots you a knowingly grateful glance. Speaking of growing up, Robert was just telling us stories about Steve's childhood. Okay, I don't believe everything he says. The story about me eating a whole apple pie in third grade was a huge exaggeration. Oh, I'd love to hear more, Robert. Well, Steve was a scrappy kid, never sat still, always climbing trees, jumping in creeks, or riding on the, his horse, Moonlight. Come on, Dad, stop messing with him. Moonlight? Actually, Steve, you've told me about Moonlight before. I... I did? A puzzled, troubled look spreads across Steve's face. You feeling all right, son? I just... How could I forget? Might have a concussion. It happens. Quiet tension hangs in the air, loaded and palpable. Steve... I'm sure you're just shaking up from the crash. Steve looks at you and nods, agreeing. Right, guess I'm just feeling a bit off my game. Hmm, I'll give the doctors a call tomorrow and be sure to get you checked out before you leave town. Just then a timer dings from the kitchen. Now it's the oven. Steve, mind entertaining our guests while I check on the roast. As Robert leaves for the kitchen, Steve shows you around the cozy, rustic space of the house. Here's the fireplace where my cousins would roast marshmallows in the winter. Here's the banister. I used to slide down when Dad wasn't looking. And here's the picnic, er, wow, picnic, picture case that Dad converted into a trophy case after I won a few too many. This is great. But where are all the pictures? Yeah, I want to see little baby Steve. Hmm, I'm sure Dad has them stashed somewhere. Steve roots around in some of the hallway drawers until he finds an old creased photo in the frame. Hey, here's one. It... You both look the same. I'm serious. I'm telling you, he's a robot. Is this you after you won your big game? The biggest! A lot of important scouts were in the stands that day. My dad was so proud! Huh, Mr. Clean-Cut All-American Poster Boy. I'm not surprised at all that you have a football victory pick like this. I love it! You both look so happy! Steve... Turn to find Robert in the doorway to the kitchen, a stern look on his face. Help me with something in the kitchen, would you? Uh, sure. Everyone, make yourself comfortable. I'll be right out. Steve hurries off to join his father in the kitchen as Nadia and Hayden head back toward their living room. You overhear the beginnings of a tense conversation coming from the kitchen. Steve, what have I told you? I don't see the problem. It's just a picture. I should continue listening by the door. Linger by the kitchen door, listening. You know how pri important privacy in this is in the family? But Dad, I trust them. It's not here. Even so, what have I always taught you? Our personal lives are our own business. Exactly. You have to trust me, son. This is for your, our own good. I mean... I won't fault them. But at the same time, he's kind of over-exaggerating over a picture of them just playing football. But okay. Suddenly hear them stir and hurry to join the others in the living room. Hey, everyone. Hey, everything all right? Uh, yeah, or at least I hope so. Soon, Robert returns to the living room with Steve in tow and a big smile on his face. Roast is done. Who's hungry? Robert leads everyone in the dining room and pulls Steve aside. Hey, is everything all right? Your dad seems upset. Oh, well, my dad is a pretty private guy. He can get kind of touchy about the family photos, especially ones where it's clear that a mother figure is out of the picture. No pun intended. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea. If I had known it was a sore subject, uh... It's fine, it's just not a topic my dad likes to talk about. And uh, But he'll be fine by the time we get to dessert. It cheers him up every time like clockwork. Now, let's grab a seat before the biscuits are gone. Hmm... If that's what you'll... Master has declared. I mean, your father. After delicious home-cooked lunch, Robert walked you out of the, to the porch to say your goodbyes. Thank you so much, Mr. Tennyson. Everything was delicious. Reminds me of home. My pleasure. It was great to meet you all. And Steve, mind that injury. Be sure to call me if you start to feel worse. 
Will do, Pops. Stop worrying so much. Thanks, Robert. We'll be seeing you. No, it was a pleasure. Hope to do it again, son. Yeah, it's real soon. Let's get another car accident with your son so he, his robotic arm detaches. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm really buying into the whole their AI. Later, the four of you and relax in the commons room of the bed and breakfast looking out over the water. All things considered, Cedar Rest is a pretty beautiful place. Not a bad place to start a home. Maybe when we're a little more settled in, after a certain someone pops a certain question? Oh, a bit fast, aren't we? Real subtle, Nadia. Look over to find Steve over by the window, lost in troubled thought, gazing out over the lake. Steve? Walk over and place a hand on his shoulder. Uh, hey, Steve? What's on your mind? You look a little worried. I guess I'm feeling a bit off. Maybe it's nostalgia? I don't know. Coming back home has been more emotional than I thought it would be. Steve takes a deep breath and then shakes away his frown. <laughs> wow, sorry to bring down the mood. Don't mind me. Watch as Steve goes to rejoin the others, putting on a smile as he kisses Nadia on the forehead. Huh. Later that night, you wake up to the sound of shouting and rush over to Nadia's suite. Nadia, what's wrong? Step into the room to meet Nadia, whose cheeks stream wet with tears. Be able to get Steve! He's gone! What? I woke up and he was gone. His suitcase is missing too. It's it's like he just packed up and left. I've been trying to reach him for hours and he's not answering any of my calls. Don't worry, we'll find him. Aiden rouses and joins you in a hurry. It's alright, Nadia. I'll find him. I'll find him if I have to search. I'll see to rest. Slow Hayden as she reaches for a coat and strides for the door. Hold on a second. First we should contact Robert and call Robert and call the police. Right, sorry. I just got anxious as to act. You can console Naughty as Hayden makes us uh, some phone calls before long. I alerted the local sheriff's department. I tried to call Robert too, but there was no answer. Maybe we should go to his place and check in person? I'll go. You stay with Nadia. Hayden gives you a kiss on the cheek and heads out the door with purpose. Minutes pass and you sit holding a distraught Nadia, but time does nothing to ease her pain. Billy, I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to search for him. Nearby, Dipper whines and paws at the window, looking outside. Oh. And then Dipper wants to search, too. There's a few places he might go. Maybe if you and I retraced our steps together, we could find some kind of clue? I'd mean a lot if you could go with me. I don't know if I could face what we might find alone. Really? Search for clues with Nadia. Just leave this to the police. I'm sure the authorities will hand it, handle it, Nadia. Okay. You stay with Nadia until the sun rises, comforting her as she alternates between slumping on the bed and pacing nervously around the room. Occasionally, Dipper offers the consolation by silently resting her chin in Nadia's lap. Restless, you open the front door of the lake house to check for Hayden's return when you feel a light crunch under your foot. Huh? Letter. Examine the letter. Find a crumpled, wind-tossed letter under your shoe, just barely pinned by the welcome mat. As you pick it up and read, Nadia rushes over, curious. Billy, did you find something? Your heart sinks like a lead weight as you read the words. Yes, it's from Steve. Nadia... It's a goodbye letter. Are you serious right now? What in the actual just happened? I'm so confused. They had such a perfect relationship and then it's like, you know what, no. Because I came home, I just don't want to be with you anymore. Like, is the AI malfunctioning? <laughs> oh. Man, I'll tell you, I just keep having fun with this. Um, speaking of which, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, and down the description below. There's links to social media, or Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. So what do you think? Do you think maybe just Steve had some flashbacks, or maybe the 
you know, what happened to him in the car accident it made him rethink things. Maybe, you know, he's malfunctioning. Either, I mean, you as a human organism can malfunction when you go through some injury. Remember that. Or is he malfunctioning as the quote-unquote theoried AI he is? Um, who knows? Maybe, you know... It's weird, the whole conversation we overheard, the whole conversation and the fact that they had no pictures. The, the whole situation is a bit weird, don't you think? Um, though for me, I'm going to be honest, I don't have many pictures of myself. Um, I have pictures of my family. I have pictures of people around me when I was growing up, but I don't have many pictures of myself. I'm not a, I'm not a photogenic person. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Boy, today's going to be a hard day to push her. <clears throat> if it was up to me, I would turn around right now, get out of this chair, go over to my bed, crawl into it, wrap myself in the blankets, and mm, just pass out for the whole damn day. I haven't been able to do that in a very, very, very long time. With that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the video. You know what to do. I thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next video, which most likely, for those who have stayed to the end of the video, will be a Diamond Editions. Um, we still have Chapter 9 and 10 of Endless Summer. We're also doing It Lives in the Woods and some other things. And also keep in mind, um, tomorrow is Chapters Days, where we've got a bunch of content coming out tomorrow. And then also a new book that's actually coming out, too. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, it's the, I believe it's called the, the Boy I Hate, which is very interesting. Hopefully it's not as bad as his. Ugh. Until next time, you know what to do. Peace.